Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Looks like the camera's jumping a little bit. Here's an update what's going on with Yellowstone. Um, this area right here, um, I've talked about before, is the most noticeable of the dead trees um, that grew up during the quiet period until Yellowstone decided to recharge and then they died off. Now they're moving the camera around. We got a view of Old Faithful and all the people there. I have two monitors here. This one here is Little West Thumb, which is by Grant, on the western side of Yellowstone Lake, and the monitor on the right, the spectrogram, that is from the bore hole um, up by Fishing Bridge there at Yellowstone Lake. Little West Thumb, like I said, is on the west side, and this is up at the top by fishing bridge and all these lines marked in red are earthquakes that the computer picked up and it's a signal for the geologists to come in and review the data now um, the area of fishing bridge is an area of uplift they recently uh, repaired or built a new road there and again, it is an area. Let me go to the world view using Google Earth. Up over here at Yellowstone Lake is Fishing Bridge. That's where the uh, one monitor is that I'm showing you, the bore hole. And the other monitor here is over by Little West Thumb. And they have a, a crack of spreading that goes uh, through uh, Yellowstone Lake. Um, now the monitor by the fishing bridge is near the Sour Creek Resurgion Dome. And the other Resurgion Dome is over here at Mallard Lake where the camera is situated. Here's a map from 2008-2009 uh, from USGS that shows the spreading. Now you have this under the ocean where uh, two tectonic plates are separating and magma comes up. Um, but there's never been any reports of magma coming up there at Yellowstone Lake. A few years ago, scientists sent a submersible down to the bottom of Yellowstone Lake. The submersible was called Yogi. And they took measurements of gases, temperature readings, etc. These are the flotation devices that were um, attached to the different monitors that were left there for probably a good year so deep is the lake that it actually crushed these styrofoam um, flotation I guess identification devices 350 feet deep I want to say um, in some spots that's how deep Yellowstone Lake is and they were shocked to find out that the temperature of the water was twice as high as what they previously thought it was or what it was in the beginning it had increased twice as hot. I wonder what it is now. So you can see many of these earthquakes here at Yellowstone Lake. One at Little West Thumb and the other one at the borehole at uh, Fishing Bridge. They match up and they haven't reported them. And you notice too that the uh, signature of the earthquakes, this one's at um, 234, 235. The signature at the northern end of the lake seems to be greater but this one doesn't here we got 125 uh through 126 let me pull this one over a little bit now this series of um, earthquakes is marked in red here at little west thumb uh, just after midnight universal time yeah see how it went quiet the sound got so loud that the monitor was not able to pick it up and it went quiet for a few minutes and then i'll come back over here oops wrong line am i on the wrong line there we go yeah it's a, a different line all right this one's at uh 51 minutes after midnight and we'll change it. Yeah, 51 minutes after midnight. This is at 1340. 
this is Little West Thumb. And 1340 at the borehole at Yellowstone Lake. Let me pull this over a little bit. All right, 234, 235, Yellowstone Lake. And same time at the um, area of Little West Thumb. I really can't pick which end of the lake would be more significant in this activity. You know, one moment it's uh, Little West Thumb, and another time it would be by Fishing Bridge. You know, we got uh, 1710. You can see the white lines as the hot gases and hot water came up. And this over here would be uh, Yellowstone Lake Fishing Bridge. This time period was probably the most significant at Little West Thumb and probably for all the events for the last uh, 24 hours. I'm pulling it through again. Uh, the right is uh, Yellowstone Lake Monitor up by Fishing Bridge. And this one here, which is by Grant. All right, here we have the monitor for Madison River, which is up there by Hebben Lake. Let me make this smaller and I'll compare it to the one at Little West Thumb. Now we got uh, 1340. And let's pull this over a little bit. Yeah. And you can see down here. Um, let me change the view. Yeah, harmonic tremors. And we'll go here. And I'll come down here. Let's compare some of these earthquakes. Okay, 234 and 40 seconds right there. Um, we'll look at the two signatures. And we'll go look at this one. So this activity was going on across the park. I would suspect that the magma was coming in from the direction of the Snake River Plateau um, because of the signature of this stuff. Yeah, and I talked about how it comes. Let me show you the map. I got so much <laughs> marked on here. Um, anyways, Madison River is up over here. Remember, it, it reversed its flow. This here is a Snake River Plateau. Um, the magma comes in, goes across, comes in at, or up, I should say, on the eastern side of Yellowstone Lake, goes back under the lake, and then comes up, yeah, up in this area. Yeah, rather confusing. But they also have a plume that comes up from the Gulf of California, travels all the way underneath, the United States and comes up also on the eastern side of uh, Yellowstone Lake. Basically two different plumes, one Snake River Plateau and the other one from the Gulf of California. Two different plumes traveling up under the lake and then um, going across under the lake and then coming up causing all the heat uh, for the Norris Junction area and yeah the uplift for um, the Sour Creek Research and Dome and the Mallard Lake Research and Dome. On the western side of Yellowstone Lake where the magma comes in it's what they call a sill and it's rich in rhyolite. This is where the magma is moving horizontally now, according to one research paper, this could be up to nine miles thick. Using supercomputers, the researchers repeatedly, it says here, got the same results, indicating a larger layer of cold magma with a higher melting point forms at the mid-crustal sill, separating two magma bodies with magma at a lower melting point, much of which is derived from melting of the crust. We think that this structure, that area, is what causes the rhyolite basalt volcanism throughout the Yellowstone hotspot. 
including supervolcanic eruptions. Bidman was quoted as saying, This is the nursery, a geological and petrological map with eruptive products. Our modeling helps to identify the geologic structure of where the rhyolite material is located. On Google search, here's the image of those two different plumes. We got the Snake River Plateau and the one that comes up from the Gulf of California. You can kind of halfway see it here, over here, and it really doesn't show you um, the direction of the other plume. But this is that sill that they're talking about where the rhyolite is formed in the uh, two bodies of magma um, mixed together. So this would basically explain why there's so many earthquake swarms in the Madison River and Norris Junction area because of the magma that's coming in um, from that other plume along the Snake River Plateau. All right, so the most latest earthquake they are reporting is a 1.9, 4.2 kilometers in depth at 1708 and 26 seconds universal time. And using Google Earth, we'll go to that location. Now that's interesting. It's along the uh, Yellowstone River by the monitor for uh, the fishing bridge, which is uh, the borehole for Yellowstone Lake. All right, so here we have the monitors, this one being the monitor for the borehole for Yellowstone Lake, and this one being for Little West Thumb. And here's the, the uh, two earthquakes. They're only reporting the first one. They're not reporting the second one. Okay, let me go here. Um, right there. That's the one they're reporting. A 1.9. Let's look at the signatures here. Okay, the 1.9. And see, and the second one looks larger. Okay, let's look at it here. This is the 1.9. And then the second one, they still haven't reported, looks larger. It very well could be possible that they're still analyzing these earthquakes. Like I said, they're marked in red for the scientists to come in and review them. And there was a quarry blast afterwards. That's way up north by Helena. Um, they are reporting that. 2.0 in Stanley. Um, let's see. If they're now reporting these earthquakes at 1340, that would have been yesterday, universal time. All right, I had to change it from my time zone to universal time zone. We got 1314, a 2.4 in Stanley, Idaho. But these are at 1340, and there's no P wave on it. This is really a strange signature on this one right here. Yeah, that's where it Oops, excuse me. That's where it went quiet. It got probably so loud that it just went quiet. And for the one for Little West Thumb, um, it shows that uh, the earthquakes came from the south. And this one, it's really hard to tell. Yeah, 1340. I really don't think it would take a half an hour for an earthquake that happened in Stanley, Idaho uh, to go across and be a signature there at Yellowstone. All right, let me move this over a little bit. I got 43 here, 42. And we'll, we'll go to the time they show, 1314. Okay, and I'll do the same for the other monitor. Yeah, two different complete different events. They're not reporting that other one. So I want to show you the tilt meters. Uh, this one here is a borehole 950 at Norris Junction. Top is north, bottom is east. Last seven days. And then the last 30 days. And we got dots way outside of the general trend of uplift. The tilt meter for Panther. Now that's near Mammoth Vault. Top is north, bottom is east. Look like they reset the machine. 
last seven days. Yeah, they reset it. We got a completely different location of where the general trend was going. And then the last 30 days, well, maybe the machine got tipped so much they had to readjust it, right? Grant, yeah, lots of dots means lots of shaking. There was a period where it wasn't recording around the 13th. Last seven days. Uh, look at this. Look at this trend. And then the last 30 days. The monitor for Yellowstone Lake. Top is north. Bottom is east. It wasn't recording too. Last seven days. Going to dot off on the side there. And then the last 30 days. And Madison River for the last seven days. Look at how it's been breathing. Taking deeper breaths in the last seven days. Top is north, bottom is east. Last seven days. And then the last 30 days. Yeah, did they reset the machine? Doesn't look like it here. Yeah, it took a sudden jump to the left there towards the west. Um, X is north, Y is east. That's the movement under the ground, the direction that the magma's moving. So that happened, oh, I would say uh, maybe a little bit more than a week ago. And that's the Madison River area. And another monitor for Norris Junction, Borehole 205. I want to see if it took its little jump too. This is the last week. And then the last 30 days. I don't know. Yeah, it's suddenly making a move towards the north. Um... Yeah, X is north, Y is east. Yeah. We're going to have to keep an eye on this because that is uh, the sill plane, as they call it, the sill, the area of the sill where the magma has been moving horizontally, and that's been doing that for a couple of years. Those of you that have been following me through the years will remember when I first reported that the magma could no longer rise up because of that rhyolite cap, that hard, explosive cap. And so it was moving sideways under the ground, horizontally. And that's another reason they had, or have had, so many earthquake swarms in this location. You know, pressure is building, the ground's getting brittle, and it can't come up out of the ground, so it's moving sideways. So that's all I have for you right now. Um, looks like they're beehive. That's beehive, and they got an eruption next to beehive going on. The people are viewing. Any thoughts or comments or questions, please put it down below. Thank you very much for your support. Um, yeah, you know who you are. Thank you. Uh, please stay safe, and I will talk to you later. God bless y'all.